All right, we're back in the EK ECG course here, level one still, G-rated for all audiences. And now we're talking about waves, the basic of waves. So first, let's talk about the isoelectric line because that's the red line in the diagram there. It's the baseline, the isoelectric line. And the waves are either above that line or below that line or right at that line. So it's just kind of general geography uh, of an ECG. The isoelectric line is the line that kind of runs through the EKG complex. It's defined by the TP segment, which doesn't mean anything to you right now. We'll talk about it here in a little bit. But it's that space after the wave that's labeled T and before the next wave that's labeled P. Now there's a U wave showing in there, but a lot of times U waves aren't even visible and, and really aren't there. So it's the TP segment and uh, we'll talk about segments and stuff later. I just wanted to throw this in right off the bat. Baseline, isoelectric line, TP segment. And I just kind of start saying that and learning that. Okay, so here are the basic waves involved in a um, you know, cardiac cycle. The, the first positive deflection off the isoelectric line is the P wave. Then the next thing is a negative deflection. That's the Q wave, if it's visible. Sometimes it's not visible. The next positive is the R wave, and then the next time it goes below the baseline is the S wave. So the QRS is a complex. It's three waves together. We call it the QRS complex. And that, we'll talk about what that means in a minute, but the sneak preview is that's when the ventricles are contracting. The P wave is when the atria are contracting. The QRS is when the ventricles are contracting. Then there's a wave after the QRS that's called the T wave, and that's actually when the ventricles are resetting and repolarizing. And again, sometimes you'll see a U wave. We keep showing it in all these diagrams just to be complete, but the U wave most of the time is not there. And um, so it's just in there for completeness, and I hope it's not distracting. Okay, so what is the P wave? The P wave is atrial depolarization. Basic fact, got to know. As soon as you memorize this, you can move on to other stuff. Atrial depolarization, that's the P wave. The impulse starts in the sinus node, and as it spreads through both atria, a P wave is generated on the EKG. What's the Q wave? First negative deflection from that baseline. You don't always see them. If they're wide and deep, they may tell you that the person's having a, an infarct, a myocardial infarction, a heart attack. Now we'll get into that actually in, in level two or level three. Um, we just want you to know right now that the QRS complex starts with a Q. A lot of times there's a little negative deflection. Uh, sometimes it's not there at all. R wave is the first positive off the baseline in the QRS. Again, not always present. Depending on what leads you're looking at, what view of the electrical activity you have, what camera, more or less, is looking at the electrical activity, you may see different shapes. And so the R wave is not always there. Sometimes it's just a S wave or just a QS wave, uh, sometimes otherwise. So what you're gonna find in EKG stuff is that very seldom we say always or never. And a lot of times we say sometimes and usually. And it's kind of a shade of gray, kind of like the rest of EMS. The R wave is part of ventricular depolarization. The S wave, also part of ventricular depolarization. So now, let's kind of look at the QRS. The Q is the first negative. The S is the second negative. Uh, the R would be the positive in between those. Those as a group, a complex, three waves, QRS, represents ventricular depolarization. The P wave represented atrial depolarization. QRS represents ventricular depolarization. Then the wave after the QRS can be positive or negative. It's shown positive here. But the wave after the QRS is the T wave. And that is when the ventricles are resetting. They're repolarizing. They're getting ready to contract again. But they are resetting electrically. And they're relaxing mechanically and filling and getting ready to contract again. Q, R, S, and T. Yeah, there's some other waves. We show the U wave, talked about that a little bit. A delta wave is kind of a slurred upstroke on the start of the QRS. Instead of the QR, 
S going straight up more or less like it does in the top picture. Uh, in the delta wave picture, you see how it's kind of curved, it's kind of slurred upwards. <clears throat> and the Osborne or J wave is a wave at the end of the QRS. Osborne and J waves have to do with hypothermia. Delta waves have to do with a short circuit and accessory pathway. Don't need you to know that right now, just saying it for completeness. And a U wave has something to do with potassium levels. So these are weird waves, but again, we're doing a thing on waves. We ought to talk about all the waves. Really want you to know P, QRS, and T. Here's a little bit more about U waves. You can kind of see them. Um, and again, I, I thought it was important to throw them in for completeness as well as this. You could say that that might be the P wave of the next, Q, uh, the next whole cardiac cycle there. So if there's a bump after the T wave, is it a U wave or is it the P wave that belongs to the next QRS? So in, in these pictures, you can clearly see there's an extra bump, but could that be an extra P wave? So uh, it, it will come up later. It's probably confusing now. Debated whether to put it in or not. Um, pretty much tossed a coin and said, yeah, we should put it in. But if this is bothering you, forget I ever said the word U wave. Just know P, QRS, and T. And know those really well and know what they stand for and, and what's going on mechanically while those are being shown electrically. Let's talk about this impulse travel now. Remember back in, in a previous lesson we talked about it, the impulse starts in the SA node. So that's showing as green, kind of a lighter green on the QRS complex at the bottom. So just kind of look at that carefully. Look at the colors and how they match up. And you can see where the impulse is in the conduction system compared to where it is on the ECG complex. I think it's a pretty powerful representation of what's going on there. We need that impulse to pause in the AV junction. So it pauses right after the P, it's in the AV node, then it's in the bundle of His, then it's in the bundle branches, and finally it's down the Purkinje's at the very last. It slows down in the AV junctional area in order to let the atria kick and fill the ventricles. So this is a pretty cool diagram. It would be uh, excellent if you could reproduce this on your own, you know, from scratch, um, and just kind of match up where things are. And we'll talk about the PR interval and the PR segment and some other stuff down the road. But here, kind of this kind of ties everything together. Where's the impulse in the conduction system compared to where it is on the ECG?